Howdy everyone. Last time we checked in on the Tua de Don and they had some new models joining the chapter. Today we'll be looking at how the paint jobs came out and touching on any relevant lore for these new units. Hopefully this will be the only update the army will need for a long time, so anything down the line will just be an addition to the new core 1500 points. The first edition is another five assault intercessors. Not much to say here since they're kind of basic troops and I've covered them before. The first batch of the Assault Intercessors and the two of Donan in general, I had laid on the weathering slightly too heavy in retrospect, but at the time I was just eager to be finished with the project since it was taking just so damn long. This time, however, I was more careful with how I weathered each model, and it really reminded me that when it comes to weathering, less can be so much more. Next up we have the new Terminators, in particular Cataphracty Terminators. While normally for 8th edition they would use the rules for the new Relic Terminator, I wanted to run these as regular Terminators, as due to being reclassified into these new Relic Terminators, Cataphracty in particular lost their ludicrous 4 plus invulnerable save, now having like a plus 5 I think, yeah, yeah, a plus 5 like regular Terminators. Their loadout is the same regardless with uh, Storm Bolter or Combi Bolter, the same fucking thing and Power Fist. I'm just going to use them as proxies for regular Terminators. It's the same loadout regardless, but regular Terminators get access to the Teleporter Homer, which is like 5 points and a little more useful than the Grenade Harness of the Cataphracty. In essence, they're regular Terminators, but just proxied as Cataphracty because of my massive boner for them. As for the models themselves, the bare pelts they were modeled with cover where the unit coloration would normally go for the two of so I decided to put the red that denotes heavy infantry on the waist and shoulder uh, leather strap things. If you notice the sergeant of this squad has an eye patch on the head of his bear pelt, this was a bit of a gaffe on my part. Uh, while marking out the quartering of the armor base coats, I doodled an eye patch on the bear thinking I'd cover it later up. Just It was like 4am, I just kind of was... Eh. I eventually ended up using contrast brown on the white base coat that was already on to cover it all up, which ended up letting the black marker show through because there's no like solid base coat on it. I, th I thought it was pretty funny, so I just kind of left it. I, I like to think that the bear he wrestled to qualify for the Terminator honors was just a bit more badass than the others, so that's why he's a, a sergeant. Or that or he's from a Metal Gear game. Next up are the new Vanguard veterans with jump packs, thunder hammers, and storm shields. But befitting their veteran rank, they get the purple coloration. I had hoped to add some tabards and robes and trinkets and whatnot to spruce up the basic assault intercessor model that I used as their base. But I've always been really shitty at working with flattened green stuff and making fabric. It got to the point when I was messing around with a test model that each time I tried, I pretty much destroyed the green stuff before I got it into a nice position, so I just decided to go with what was there. The quartering follows up the jump pack, and the wings were painted black to further reinforce that raven imagery. Celtic spiritualism puts a lot of stock into what's called animism, the belief that animals impart a portion of their power or soul into people or nature around them. The Terminators get bears to harness their natural strength and endurance, while the Vanguard veterans here get beaky helmets and wing jump packs to not only harness the power of the Raven's spirit, but to pay homage to Morrigan, a protector goddess figure of the local people of Tara, whose culture they have adopted and integrated into. Sort of along the same vein of that, while it is indeed against standard Imperial beliefs to worship any but the Emperor, although he wouldn't really want to be worshipped in the first place. Regardless, the two of Donan see both Danu and Morrigan as, like, agents of the Emperor himself, not as a replacement of any kind. Additionally, the two of Donan and the people of Tara respect each other's previous beliefs and lifestyles before they had met up, essentially, and so they'd see no real issue in representing both sides of their beliefs in other spiritual figures, as the people of Tara recognize the authority of the Emperor, especially as the newest recruits of the Tuat Adonan are recruited from those on Tara willing to defend their home. So there are very two distinct cultures within the society, but they have managed to find some kind of middle ground in their struggle to survive in the darkness of the Exilus Sector. 
some of the older Marines who were, you know, more indoctrinated, or they came from the original Crusades in the Imperium, they it kind of rubs them the wrong way. But given that without the people of Tara, the chapter would have no new recruits at all. They're 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 vocal minority that you know complaining about the Zoomers, but at this point they need them. So they can't raise too much of a stink about it. Of course, in the darkness of Exilus, many are lost to the endless fires of war. In such trying times, the duties of an apothecary are in great demand to ensure the safety of the chapter's gene seed. While many brave men are willing to take on this sacred charge, the chief apothecary of the chapter is Dian Keck, named after the same figure in Celtic myth. I like going into the original mythos to give some context to the Exilus mythos, so we'll start there. So in the original mythos, Dian Kecht was the premier healer of the Tula de Danon, a god of healing and the third brother to Nuada and another person called Gwibnu. He's the son of Dagda and had two daughters and four sons, one of which would be the father to the great Tula de Danon champion, Lu. Dian Kecht is most well known for his work on healing King Nuada after the loss of his hand in battle, it deemed him unfit to rule due to ancient, uh, mandate, I guess. With the help from Krejna, a metalsmith of the Tua de Danum, and Dian Keck's healing magic, they were able to fit Nuada with a silver hand that allowed him to return to the throne and threw the stinky trash boy breast to the Shadow Realm. Afterwards, one of Dian Keck's son, who I believe is named Mayak, used some further magic afterwards to replace the silver hand with one of flesh and blood. Now this is something Dian Keck couldn't do, so this made him extremely jealous, and did the next logical thing, which was brutally murder him with a sword. But here's the funny part. He hit him four times with a sword, but the first three strikes were healed by Mayak quickly after. It was only the fourth one that cut his brain in half that actually killed him. It reminds me of that really cringy, like, haha, my HP regen is so big that four of you dudes can't kill me. Uh, my E dick is so huge scene from uh, Sword Art. Except this story is funny and only took half a minute out of my life and not the runtime of an entire fucking season just to disappoint me beyond all comprehension. Jesus, fuck, I hated it. But anyways, in later stories of the Tua de Danon, Mayak is just kind of back from the dead with no mention of that at all, just healing people alongside his dad, and I like how the Wikipedia entry describes this in particular, so I won't even try to bother one-upping that. There was also one time where Dagda and the Morrigan bore a son with such tremendous and terrifying world-ending power that they asked Dian Keck to do something about it, so he surgically removed three serpents that could kill everyone in Ireland if they grew to adulthood out of the infant's heart, because that's normal, and he burned them to death and decided to throw it into the river just to be safe. But the serpent's ashes made the river just fucking boil and killed everything in it. Oops. Uh. Job's done. Coming back to Exos lore, Dean Keck retains the position of being the best white mage in the guild, and being both the brother of Nuada, the chapter master, and the son of Dagda, the current head chaplain. While lore-wise, he's still, of course, still the brother of uh, Gibnu as well. Gibnu didn't make the cut for the 1500 uh, core points of the armory, as that was just way too many characters to try to jam in and still be decent, but don't worry, you'll be seeing Gibnu in the future, especially at 2000 points. So that kind of wraps it up for Dian Kecht, but real quick, I've had two questions pop up from some of my friends that I'd like to address real quick. Number one, why are the, none of the ornamental shields painted on my army? Quick answer, Jesus Christ, man, get off my back. I got a lot of shit on my plate, you know? Long answer, I don't know what kind of heraldry or designs I want to put on them yet, which includes the banner on my ironclad, Sir Martin of Iron. I'll leave them white. I can paint them what, whenever, whatever I want, when I finally make up my mind, no big deal, yada yada. Question 2. While we're talking about apothecaries, who is the gene father of the Tua de Danon? While my favorite chapters all stem from Dorne and Sanguinius, the Tua de Danon simply don't have one gene father. Being from the Ultima founding, they joined the Indominus Crusade as Grey Shields, uh, space marines with mixed gene seeds that didn't get uh, pre-assigned to anybody. 
you know, before abandoning the whole crusade under leadership of Nemet. This means that the Tuatadonan, as a whole, has a variety of gene seeds to its name, with new recruits simply being assigned the gene seed that is most compatible with their biology. Uh, that means with each gene seed, every boon and flaw of the original gene seed is present, meaning that some marines may find themselves struggling to stave off the black rage or abhorrent like bad luck, they might be really dark like salamanders or pale like the raven guard, or find that certain organs just don't function, you know, like Dorn's boys don't spit acid. This doesn't apply to space wolves, as their gene seed was just un too unstable for a call to poke around with anyways, and I don't want those yippy wolf fuckers wolfing up my wolf chapter, you know? Viking space marines, you had such a good idea, why did you fuck it up? Alright, with that quick side note out of the way, we'll move on to the final model. Here is a close-up of the new mini for the Dagda. I realize some stories just call him Dagda, but every time I look at references, they call him the Dagda, and it makes him sound like, I don't know, uh, the situation or some shit. I, I, I like it, so I'm, that's what I'm going to keep doing. For the mini itself, I really enjoy how the printed helmet came out. I was worried about some of the layered lines showing, but after the paint and the primer went on, I don't really see anything. I was also worried about the teeth being too small to really get that detail, but a dot of highlight color on the skull part really does wonders, especially with the wash in there. Uh, while he's not the big stompy dreadnought, I had a riddle. Uh, uh, I, I had a riddle advent. Uh, yeah, I had a riddle adventure. How about that shit? I originally envisioned his new look certainly does wonders to the spiritual leader of the chapter. Uh, while painting this, I had a thought that I could just use my old Dagna model as like a Contemptor Dread or something if I really wanted to. That felt kind of weird, and I honestly didn't think about it until now. So, at least he's not permanently gone. Might look weird with two Dagnas running around, but oh, whatever. I had to highlight the blue on this particular model twice over, because it was kind of hard to see against the green, and it still doesn't really show up that well from a distance, but I think it looks okay up close. Normally when I was choosing these tartans, I tried to go with colors that made sense and looked good from like previous designs, and something that kind of contrasted well from a distance, but I, I guess the green and blue, maybe the blue was too dark. I kind of wanted to use it the same blue that I used on like my heavy support units to kind of keep the color theme together. I would, it would look kind of weird with just light blue, or you know, some shit like that. But, eh, I don't know. It still looks fine. Uh, the tartans in general, I know I made a few mistakes with, but I'm learning to just kind of live with the mistakes. I could easily strip the model and redo it, but I have to consider if it's worth the time and energy to do all of that. I have to consider my tendency to be tired of projects the longer they drag on for, and my interest in, you know, starting other models and projects. It's very easy for me to fall into bouts of perfectionism, not quite in terms of my final product, but more along the lines of just being too strict to myself. Like way too strict like I know I can do better because I've done it before or I know the technicalities to do a better job like I'm really trying to ease up on myself because having that attitude all the time just really wears me down and I'm not perfect at it at least if I had let these models slide for now it's a small personal victory but I'm a real asshole to my own standards so I'll, I'll take what I can get you know Alright, that pretty much summarizes the new reinforcements of the Core 1500, and, you know, with a little bit of my rambling sprinkled in there. Every time I post a video, I get, oh yeah, that was really good, but dude, you gotta stop rambling. It's like, I, I can't. I literally cannot. Not only just, like, unscripted shit comes to my head while I'm recording, but, like, I don't know, if I sat here, if I just read a script the entire time, it'd feel way too fucking robotic, and I'm not trying to, you know do a super perfect job just uh, but anyways I realize most of the channels on this video are just for this one chapter which I realize some people may find boring as, you know people are tired of space marines I, I get it uh, meanwhile my Necron dynasty knocked everything out of the park in like one video uh, I'm not sure which format people would enjoy more like the uh, the video or two of like a more condensed presentation for the Necrons or like Something step-by-step step I did for the chapter, you know, like, this is how I'm going to organize everything, this is how I'm going to set up the lore, 
Uh, these are the models, you know, conversions, painting. I, you know, I'd, I'd love some feedback for that if anybody has anything, just to kind of know what direction to steer myself towards in the future. Um, I feel like I could compress it into just like, here's the lore, here's the conversions, and here's the painting. That might be a good compromise. I'm not sure. It, it's whatever you guys like, because yeah, I, I like it either way. I had fun with both versions, so. Uh, but honestly, I have some other inquiries for you guys in general about the channel. I mean, at the end of the day, it's my channel. Obviously, I'm going to do whatever I want, but, you know, I like I like having people around to share my interests, you know? I, I like having you guys around to watch, and, um, hell, I was just looking uh, yesterday morning, I think. I gotten, like, 50 new subscribers and, like, very recently and it's like holy shit that's that's super cool like i i very much appreciate anybody who subscribes to the channel it's very heartwarming knowing that people out here like seeing me bumble around but i, I would honestly just ask this question in like a community tab if i had it but i don't um apparently when your channel gets bigger you get access to it um, so I might have to settle for like an update video or something, which I don't really like in general, but I think that's just gonna kind of have to happen. It's only one of them. It's not gonna kill us, right? So anyways, I've taken up more of your fucking time than I expected, so uh, as usual, so I'll, I'll see you guys around. Take it easy, have fun, be safe, all that other jazz, niceties, um, don't get the plague and die, uh, stay in school. Look both ways before you cross the road. Don't have a fucking riddle in adventure. Uh, yeah.